Yes. All righty, let's get started. Yes, so, yes. We, uh, we won't interrupt you. <laughs> there was a, uh, a Baptist, a Catholic, and a realtor, and they all died at the same time. And they went up to heaven, and they met with St. Peter. And St. Peter said, uh, listen, your rooms aren't ready yet. Hold on. So he called Satan. He said, Satan, can you hold these people for a little while for me until their rooms are ready? And Satan reluctantly agreed. They go to, to, go to, they go to hell, right? And uh, a few hours later, <clears throat> Satan calls St. Peter and says, listen, you've got to get these guys out of here. He says, why? What do you mean? He said, well, the Baptist keeps saving everybody, the Catholic keeps forgiving everybody, and the realtor just raised up enough money to get air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, you know what, gang? Realtors have uh, really great negotiating skills, and you know, sometimes you know, we just need to direction and funnel those, uh, those skills and the, put them in the right direction so that they're effective for you. And one of them is, of course, your, uh, your fee for service, which brings <laughs> us to this session uh, specific, um, there, there are a lot of different names for this type of uh, training class, but specific dialogues for competitive commission objections. That's the, the specific title I'm going to use today uh, for this session. But I, if you've looked at your handout, I've jam-packed your handouts with over 20 pages of dialogues. I mean, I don't think there are but they're more, out of any objection you could possibly handle, I don't think there are more dialogues out there than there are for this commission objection. Yet this is the number one thing that most real estate agents struggle with. And it's not necessarily knowing the words, gang. It, the first step is knowing and feeling what your real value is. Because until you feel and know what your real value is, then you're never going to feel comfortable asking for the uh, average and or above average fee. Now one of the ways to do that, of course, is to keep going to training and learn your skills. It gives you a sense of confidence that is unmatched with any other realtor that could possibly go into that listing appointment. Another uh, great opportunity is to learn your scripts and dialogues. Know what to say, when to say it, how to say it. But most importantly is have value. When you go in there on that listing appointment, have some things of value. Ken and I were talking just yesterday about going into a listing presentation and having all your stuff with you to show them what you're going to do to market the property. We can all talk about what we're going to do, but to show them what we're going to do, it just gives you the, 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 the power and the strength and the fortitude to go in there and really feel strong and confident about getting a higher than average fee. Now, some of you know about my personal story. Uh, real quick, when I was an agent, I one day decided I'm going to start charging 7%, and I did. And I was nervous the first time that I slid that paper across the table. I was so nervous my throat dried out and I couldn't talk. And that was a good thing because sometimes when they say, you know, when it's time to close, what do you do? Quiet, right? <laughs> you, you. So I slid the paper in front, I handed the pen, and then I just was quiet. Not because I wanted to be, but because I had no choice. I couldn't talk. I was so nervous. And in the form, I pre-typed um, seven in the form before I even went to the house. So when I got to the house and I slid it, and they looked it over and they're reading and they go, and they look at me and they said, uh, seven, is that that's your fee? And I looked at them and I went. <laughs> <laughs> and then they looked at each other and they looked back at the next paragraph. And they looked at the next paragraph. They signed the bottom and then they handed it to me. I peeled off a copy for them. I got in the car and I said, wow, it worked. <laughs> Now, I went on the second appointment. Guess what? Did the same thing happen? No. no. In fact, the same thing never happened ever again. <laughs> hey, listen, gang, it was a great first experience for me, but um, and it helped me give me the strength and the belief that, wow, this, this can happen. Um, so what I had to do, of course, is I had to learn how to handle the commission objection. I mean, if you're charging seven and everyone else is charging five and six, are you going to be hit with a commission objection? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely, positively. <clears throat> so. I had to learn to do this. So what I did is I did some research and I came up with some, own, some of my own things. I asked some of the experienced agents in my office, what do you say when a customer says we don't want to pay your fee? And I gathered it all up and I wrote them all down. In fact, those uh, notes that I took are still in your handout today. And that was taken back in the early 90s, okay? And guess what? Those same techniques and dialogues are still taught today and they still work and, uh, and they're very powerful. Now. Um, I started 
I was so excited about this that I started sharing my ideas with other agents in my office because they couldn't believe that I was getting a higher than average fee for service. And um, one time, uh, a manager from another office uh, met with me and she said, um, listen, could you come to my office and share this at an office meeting um, in terms of what you do and how you do it, what you say to get a higher than average fee? So I did. And so that forced me to put a little seminar together. And I was real nervous talking at the seminar as well. I had to keep drinking water all the time because my throat kept drying out. And I remember sharing with them all the dialogues that I was using. And I remember I had a personal assistant at the time, and she was working with me. And she was a little angry at me, and she said, John, why are you sharing all this stuff with everybody? These people are your competition. And I smiled. I said, listen, I said, the more you give, the more you get in this world. I said, believe me, I don't think I've ever gone into competition with any one of these people in this office head to head on a listing appointment. And if I did, would it be a bad thing if, if they knew how to handle a commission objection and I knew how to handle a commission objection? I mean, would that be a bad thing? You know what, gang? Um, it's, there's nothing <coughs> more important that demonstrates your value than what you ask for, for your fee. You know, in fact, one of the dialogues it says, you know what, um, you know, every it's okay if you if you if you talk to an agent who has a discounted fee, but be be aware that everybody knows what they're worth. Ooh. <laughs> be caution. You know, word of caution. Everyone knows what they're worth, right? So if someone's charging you four or five percent, well, they know what they're worth. And by the way, I'm I'm a six or a seven percent. Um, yesterday, a comment came up where uh, an agent had mentioned to me, uh, John, um, it's easier to get a higher fee on a lower end property than it is a high end property in terms of sale price. And I said, well, listen, uh, what do you mean by that? And she said, well, you know, people will negotiate more who have the higher end homes and they're tougher to deal with. And I said, well, listen, here's the mindset you have to have, gang, and I want to share this with you right now. The mindset is this. You have to go in and ask for your fee first of all. Prior to that, you have to believe you're worth it. And I'll be honest with you, because your voice inflection, your body language, your, your facial expressions, uh, everything that oozes out of every pore of your body is either going to sh show confidence or not <laughs> when you slide that paper in front of you. So if you don't have a listing presentation that you believe is the best presentation out there, that it's a listing presentation that can truly knock somebody's socks off. If you don't have a marketing program for a listing in this market that is better than your competitors, then you probably shouldn't be charging more. You follow me? So in other words, it's not about the price, it's not about the fee, it's about the value gang. People buy value. You follow me? Um, you know, uh, John, if you don't mind me asking, what kind of car do you drive? I have a Cadillac. You have a Cadillac. Great example. Okay, great. And so what I would say to a consumer is I'd say, geez, you know, I noticed you have a Cadillac in the driveway. Why didn't you buy a Yugo? That's the cheapest car you can buy. And... Don't want any trouble with it. Yeah, right. Don't want it to run. <laughs> don't want to have to worry about right. it. You want quality, right? Yeah. See, what's, what's confusing to me, Mr. and Mrs. Consumer, is that you're looking for the cheapest agent. Why didn't you buy the cheapest car? With all due respect, I mean, really, why didn't you buy the cheapest car? Let's have a conversation about that. And let's, let's talk about the real reasons. And so why wouldn't somebody buy the cheapest car possibly made? Give me some examples, folks. Go. Let me hear it. Why? That's the only money they have. They, you know, they'll buy the cheapest car. Right, but what the people that didn't buy the cheapest car? Oh, the people that didn't. Why would they buy the car that, like, they why did John buy a Cadillac instead of a Yugo? They want reliability. Okay, they want reliability, right. I can afford it. I, you can afford it, right. <laughs> okay, what else? Status symbol. Status symbol, it. sure. Yeah, what else? Uh, what you're used to. Your parents did that and that, that, that you continue to do. You're used to luxury. Okay. All right, yes? Yes. Has a higher resale value than the others? Or? No. See what Ken just said? Ken said the word value. Yeah. <clears throat> See, the word value. You know, John believes that in, if he owns that car, he's going, to be, he's going to be able to put more miles on that car vehicle than he would a Yugo. In other words, what's the best value? 
it's not always the cheapest item. You know, think about anything you've ever bought. I mean, do you always walk in? If you ever go into Radio Shack and you wanted to buy a, ca uh, a camera, a digital camera, would you look for the cheapest one or would you look for the one that has, uh, you know, a good value? In other words, would you look for the most expensive one or you look for the cheapest one or would you look for the one that brings you the most value? Most value. Right. Some people want to get the most expensive one because the most expensive one has the most features that will take it further out into it, it won't have uh, technology that will be behind, like a laptop. I'll give you a perfect example. I remember the first time I bought a laptop, um, two or three years later, I was buying software, gang, that wouldn't work on the laptop. Yeah. And you know why? Because I bought the cheapest laptop. <laughs> so what did I have to do? I had to buy a new laptop. Did I really save money? No. So the second time I bought a laptop, I called up uh, the, the manufacturer and I said, I want the one that has the largest memory, the, most, the largest capacity of hard drive space. Do you know that that laptop lasted me almost seven years before I had to toss it aside to get a new one? Seven years versus two or three, which one, now which one did I pay more money for? The second one, right? But which one gave me the most value? You follow me? Yeah. So it's really about value. When you're working with a real estate agent, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, the value comes from how am I going to get put more money in your pocket than another agent, okay? Now, here's the formula. You ready, gang? Feel free to take notes on this somewhere as well. The formula is the more I do to market your property, the more marketing services I perform, right, is going to create more activity, <laughs> more prospects for your property. The more prospects I attract for the property, what will that do to the um, to to people wanting your home? Demand, so, the demand will go up. Demand goes up exactly. I get, I like this example. If we had an auction on your home, and I was able to get one person to show up, what would happen to the price? Oh. Right. <laughs> what if I had a thousand people show up to the auction? What would happen to the price of your home? And I'll fight for it. Right. So here's what I want to ask you to do, Mr. and Mrs. Sullivan. I don't want you to hire a real estate agent based on the fact that my fee is higher or their fee is lower. I want you to hire a real estate agent based on all the marketing services they perform. Okay? Because the person who performs the most amount of marketing services are going to attract the most amount of people. Does that make sense? And does it, gang? Yeah. Absolutely. So you hire the real estate agent who provides you with the most amount of marketing services and they of course are going to attract the most amount of people and by attracting more people what will that do to the price of your home? It will go up. Okay. So again that's bringing value to the table. Um, now let's go into uh, your handouts where it says how does a seller <coughs> know that your fee is negotiable? A. They read about it in the globe. B, your fee is typed into the agreement, or C, um, agents do not negotiate fees. How does a seller know that your fee is not negotiable? B. B is correct, yes. Your fee is typed into your agreement. You should protect your commission because A, no one else will, B, you are entitled to make a fair profit, or C, it's negotiable. B. B is correct. Okay, when a seller says you cut your commission, just say, okay. <laughs> when a seller says, will you cut, just cut your commission, you say, no, <laughs> with a friendly, <laughs> <a> friendly smile. <laughs> or when a seller says, you cut your commission, and you say, no way, pal, and don't you dare ask me again. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it, of course? B. B, you got it. Number three, are there circumstances where you might cut your commission? No, only if they ask or when it's the right thing to do. The answer is C, C. when it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number two. As in when is it the right thing to do? Oh, I know you're really? going to get to that. Oh, I was? Okay, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Someone yesterday said for repeat business. Listen, I, you know. In both ends. So you know, well. repeat business, right, gang? Uh, what, what do they mean by that? Oh, well, it's the first they sold their house once and now they're selling it again. Mm. When they brought you back. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, here's, well, let me, let me five, show Or five, six times. But even then, I remember somebody asking me that. 
that I had sold and then sold them another one and all that. And they said, since we've given you four sales, couldn't you like that? And well, I, I have said, six more grandchildren now. No, but I, I said, you know, uh, <laughs> if you were working, I said, this is my job. If you were working and somebody came to you and said, do you mind taking a little less this year or something? I said, I can't. Exactly. I've got all my expenses. And it's, you know, I'm counting on you, and I appreciate that you call me again. I yes. said, I really can't, you know. Yeah. I said, I'll take you out to dinner one day, you know, laughing. I never Good. did. So yeah. they, they didn't ask. They didn't yeah. That was a great way to nice. handle it, Mark. You know, and at least they felt comfortable that, hey, at least they asked, okay? Yeah. Uh, feel this gang, okay? In uh, 1996, okay? I closed over 90, tran uh, exactly 90 closed transactions that year. 73% of that business came from personal referral, and my listings were 7%. So I didn't reduce my fee to get, what I did is I added more value. In other words, um, you know what, I could take away some value, I could take away some of my services, but I wouldn't be doing the best job for you. You know, I'd, I'd rather not do that. <laughs> Now, why would you hire me versus anyone else? What makes me so different? You know. Yes, John. Yeah, do you do you uh, do you advocate uh, explaining the, to the client about the commission structure? How yes. six percent really relates to John Nishan or this listing agent? Fifty-fifty. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Fifty for you. Yep. Maybe <clears throat> fifty for me, I, I, or or less in, in many instances for yep. some realtors. Absolutely, I do. In fact, I have uh, a visual uh, technique I'm going to share with you shortly that talks about that specific. I think it's a great idea uh, because it brings some reality to the picture for people, right? They, they know that you're not getting the whole thing, right? I think it's a very smart idea. Very smart idea. And a lot of people don't know exactly. When I first started, friends of mine said, oh, I saw you saw it and you got 6%, so you made, you know, like that. I said, no. I said, they do three, the people who find the buyer, I do three. My company has to take it. I said, I end up with a... What's left? You know. Right. What's left? Yeah, what's right. left? Yeah. Plus, you have to pay they taxes, can... personal oh. expenses, keeping oh. in touch with your customers, your wardrobe, gas for your car, right? So... Makes a little sense. sympathy. Get a little sympathy. Yeah, right. good. <laughs> when when uh, when logic doesn't work, use emotion, right? When emotion doesn't work, use logic, right? So when is it the right thing to do? Well, you know what, gang? I'll, I'll give an example of when I reduced my fee when it was the right thing to do. Um, and uh, actually, it's it's kind of interesting, but I really, I, I guess you could say I really didn't reduce it by doing what I did. But uh, let me explain to you what happened. A uh, young couple came to me, they really, really wanted to sell their home. And I said, well, I'll reduce your fee if you're going to buy another property. And they said, well, that's the problem. We can't afford to buy another house either. We're going to have to rent. And I said, oh, okay, well. So I was going to make an adjustment from seven to six if you sell your home through me and you sign a buyer agency agreement and you agree to buy your next home through me, okay? And uh, they couldn't do that. So I thought, well, I, what I have, well, I kind of with your children, you know, what you do for one, you should be able to do for others, right? And I thought, well, it just wouldn't be fair to my, to my other clients, you know, I thought to myself for me to, you know, do that for someone and not for someone else. And uh, it's not like I needed the listing, I had other listings, and I, was, I knew I was going to get more listings later on, so, um, you know, I thought, well, what can I do to help these folks out? And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I said, well, listen, why don't I do this? Why don't I adjust the fee now? If you agree to sign a promissory note for me um, and uh, to pay me the difference over time. And they agreed. So what, what, what I did was I said, you know what, um, you, signed a, um, you signed a listing agreement, which was for 6%, right? They wanted me. Now, they, they were try now feel this concept, gang. They wanted to save money. They had no money. Are you following this? They didn't have the money to pay the fee of 7%, but they so desperately wanted me to handle the sale. Why? Because they saw the value. They, they saw the value. Money. They knew that by my, my, my marketing plan and, what I, and my negotiating skills that I was going to get them more money for the house than someone else. They were afraid that if they listed with someone else that they would, it would take more time to get it sold. Time. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, right? Time is f passing by. You know, uh, someone had mentioned yesterday at our sales meeting too, uh, it was Judy, she said, you know, she mentioned to a, a homeowner once that, you know, if you look at what you're paying for your mortgage, 
right? Let's say it's $2,000. How much of that money is going toward the interest portion of your mortgage? Well, maybe $1,700, right? Okay, you multiply that times six months. How much money is that? That's my entire fee, she said. So by hiring me, for, if you sell it your own by yourself, and it takes you six months, or you list it with me, and it takes three months or less, or who knows, right, depending on where you price your property and what you offer for a Cobra fee. So it can make all the difference in the world. So what I did was I signed an exclusive right to sell agreement, I made an adjustment to 6%, and over a period of one year, they sent me a check every single month, uh, made out to my company, and every month I'd give the check to my company and they'd give me my share, right, every month until it was paid. And at the end they sent me a thank you note, and I sent them a thank you note in return, you know, and, and I would keep in touch, send them a postcard every month where they were living, and uh, they really were extremely appreciative of doing that. So, you know, that, that's a situation when it was the right thing to do, okay? So, um, now, number two, an alternative to lowering the commission to, to get the listing is A, turn, turn down the listing, B, raise the price and work harder, or C, talk them into raising it. Raising it. Turn down the listing. Uh, actually, the, I always throw one trick question in, uh, out of the five, <laughs> and the answer is B, and I'll, I'll share that with you as to why and how you can do that. Number one, if you know you will be asked to cut your commission, you have one of two choices. A, do not go out on the appointment, or B, be prepared with objection handlers. B. B. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next page. And um, what I want to do is I want to share with you... Uh, <coughs> I want to share with you, uh, I want to do a little role play back and forth with you on this one, okay? Um, okay, Louise, ask me, uh, say, John, will you cut your commission? Ready, go. John, will you cut your commission? No. <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh. That's good. I'm going to help my wife be guilty. <laughs> <laughs> good. Almost like the silly you would even ask. Yeah. Type of question, you know. Yeah. I, I love the what, what Mark just said too, and the way she handled that and everything. She kind of handled it in such a way, you know, stop being so silly. Don't. What are you talking about? You know, and and that works. That's very very powerful technique. So I'm going to role play with you right now. I'm going to ask you, and I want you to, in response, say uh, no. But I want you to do it with a friendly smile, almost silly. You would even ask that, John. You ready? Okay. Here we go. Um, will you cut your commission? No. no. <laughs> No. You're no good. Way. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that million dollar smile John has, right? <laughs> it's like, you don't have to say, just smile. <laughs> just laugh. <laughs> and what I think is important too is just doing that. And I think most of our tendency would be to keep talking about why you should. But if you just smile, it makes them more uncomfortable. <laughs> right. They start wiggling in their chair, right? And it, it puts them in a position where they may just want to go on because they feel uncomfortable. Yes. And if, that's all you need to do, then we can forget the rest of the class, you know? Yes. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Wait, that's great. That's great. <laughs> right. And now, if that doesn't work, I probably have about 20 or 30 more things you can say in this packet. Uh, you know, we're not going to go through all of them, but I'm just going to hit the highlights. I just wanted, to, wanted you to have them all. Um, you know, uh, I forgot who said this yet. Maybe it was you, Ken, who said this yesterday, and I forgive me for not remembering uh, who said it, but... Um, it was, uh, you know, sometimes if you, it was you, you said if you just have one thing. Yeah, just one. If you can just learn one dialogue, one thing to say when they say, will you cut your commission, that'll work about 90% of the time. But well, sometimes they press on. And after you say, no, sometimes they'll, they'll, say, that, they'll say this to you, say, come on, you know, come on, just, just cut your, I mean, everyone else is going to do it, why not you do it, right? And then you can go to objection handler number two. Okay, let's let's read this one. Has it if ever I, happened to you that when you said <clears throat> no, that they said, well, you know, that they walked out, let's say, or threw yeah. you out or something? Well, I've never gotten, gotten, but I I've, don't think I've so. I've never been thrown out. No, yeah. not at all. Um, but <laughs> uh, but you know what? They've. Um, if I did, I'd say, hey, I've been thrown out of better houses than this. I might say that to them. But anyway. With a smile. With a friendly smile. smile. Yeah. That's good. I'll be <laughs> back. Yeah, right. I'll be back. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, no, that's never happened. But people have definitely said, oh, come on, John. 
Um, they've always they they pushed me a little further, you know. Uh, after that, so then I have all these dialogues. Um, now listen, gang, I'm going to share with you uh, four great dialogues now. But then I also added to this list a bunch of other dialogues that I used when I was an agent as well. And uh, I remember I gave. Remember I told you I gave that <coughs> seminar to that office. And so what I did is I had the list, I had to write them all out, I had to put them together, I put them together as a handout, I gave them to all the agents, these objection handling techniques, and I went on a listing appointment probably about three or four days after that. And while I was on the appointment, there was a husband and wife sitting at the table, and they asked me to cut my feet, and they were so good at asking me to cut my feet that they just kept asking over and over and over again, and I probably went through eight or nine of these 13 techniques. There's, there were as many as I could remember. And I kept thinking to myself, this is great because this is all fresh in my mind. I have all these different things, right? And they just kept looking at me and smiling with a friendly smile and keep asking me, and I kept with a friendly smile saying no in a lot of different ways. And uh, so finally, uh, they asked me again, and I went back to using an objection handling technique that I used before. And the wife went, ha! She said, you already used that one. <laughs> and I said, that's right, and I'll use the other eight if you keep asking me. <laughs> and, and the husband smiled, the wife smiled, and they looked at each other, and they laughed and laughed and laughed. And the husband looked at the wife and said, he's good. <laughs> and they go. signed. He said, John, do you know who I am? And I'm like, I really didn't. I just knew his name, you know, and I knew he owned a house. <laughs> and I knew he had to sell, right? And I said, no. He goes, I own the car dealership down the road. And it's a huge car dealership. And he owned it. And I thought, wow. I mean, here's a gentleman who's probably dealing with negotiating on a very regular basis, who's probably really good at it, uh, probably teaches it on occasion, right? You know what, gang? Here's the moral of that story. I was being tested. They didn't want a weak agent. They didn't want a weak salesperson. Do you think he would hire a weak salesperson? No way. He knew that if I was strong with him and handled it in a professional way, that I was the right agent to handle it when the buyer came into that to, his, to buy his property. He knew that I was the person who was going to negotiate the best for working with a buyer to get him the best price on his home. You follow me again? Sometimes you're just being tested. Hold that in your mind. Hold that in your mind. Remember that. Sometimes they're just testing you. They don't expect you to do it. In fact, there are many sellers who really don't want you to do it. <laughs> but they're going to test you anyway. Okay? So, uh, I like this one. It's called Appeal to Their Morals. Okay? If I were to say yes to 5% right now, that would be like I lied to you a minute ago when I said I would do it for 6 John and Mary, I believe that that would be the worst way to start a business relationship, and I do believe uh, I, that you would have to agree with that too. Am I right? And then you look at them and go like this, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I'd rather see us do? I'd rather see us raise the price that 1% if that's so important to you. Make me work that much harder to get you full price for your home. And then what I would do is I would simply go to the agreement form, I would cross out the list price that we agreed upon. I'd add 1% to that price. I'd ask them to initial it and keep my fee the same. A, weak, a weaker agent would cross out the commission, write the new commission in, and have them sign it. What you're going to do now is you're going to cross out the sale price, add 1% to it if it's so important to them, and then have them sign it. It's the same thing. Right, gang? <laughs> now, some. Uh, some, uh, that almost makes the assumption that the people you're working with are stupid. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean... I'm going to raise the price, but you're getting, the bottom line is the bottom line anyway. What you're doing is you're proving to them, which is an awesome point, Ken, is that you're proving to them, look, it's all about what you net in your pocket. It's not what I charge for a fee. Right. You know, Listen, if that 1% is so important to you, why don't we just tack it on the sale price? You can always say no if it's a lower offer. And that's it. You know, it is what it is. It totally diffuses them. I love this one the best. It works the best. And uh, because it makes people, they, they really don't know what to say. They're completely dumbfounded. They're like, uh, uh, uh. You know? <laughs> and, it, and it's very powerful. You guys like that one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you see yourself using that? Mm -hmm. No. Is that 1% yeah. of the sale price? List price? List price, yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's not guaranteed that they're going to hit the lowest price anyway. Well, what would happen in other sessions when I was giving this, sharing this dialogue with people, um, some people would say, well, you know, can, can you guarantee that yeah. listing price? And you, know, you, yeah. you can't, but you, but listen, you're the seller, you're in control, you can always say no to a lower offer. Yes. It's totally up to you. Here's another thing that usually comes up when I teach this dialogue. Um, <laughs> some agents will say, well, John, you just did a class three weeks ago that talked about the importance of pricing the home correctly. And now you're telling us to raise the price? I said, well, listen, where were you? Right, thank you, Louise. One percent is not going to make a difference if you started off right to begin with. Right. Adding one percent is not going to make any difference, right? And you're going to come back 30 to 40 days later and, say, and, and talk about readjusting the pricing anyway, right, if, it's, if that price isn't working. I mean, so, again, it's not enough to make that big of a difference in the amount of activity that we get on the property, one percent, if you're starting off right to begin with, okay? And I think during the negotiation processes too, you can sell yourself even more. Yes. You know, I I I just went through a negotiation that I'm really proud of. But every time I went back to the buyer, I said, "Boy, these people are tough. They really make me work hard." Yes. You know, and this is what I, you know, this is where they were. I got them down to this, and before I came back to you, I asked them one more time, and this, you know, this is really tough. We're getting, you know, we're doing what we need to do for you, and they say, "Boy, thank you," but it's it's. It's truth, but it's kind of smoke and mirrors. It's just yeah. telling them how hard you're working. Exactly. And they appreciate that. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I remember a, a baseball player being interviewed one time, and they asked him, you know, what makes you so good? And you know what his answer was? You know, he's an outfielder. He said, I make the hard ones look easy, and the easy ones look hard. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're doing a transaction, and you're, and you're working hard for these people, tell them. If it's an easy transaction, tell them that, that Make it look harder, you know, and, and show them that, you know, listen, uh, like you might want to say to them something that's completely truthful and honest, but at the same time, lay out all the details. <clears throat> well, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I'm going to present this to the seller. They might say no. They might kick me right out of their house. They might not even let me back in. They might be so insulted by your low offer that they may not want to respond to any future offers. Are you sure you want to come in at this price? Yes, we do. I said, okay, well... I just what you're doing, gang, is you're preparing them for the worst. And then you come the seller says looks at the other and says, Oh, okay, well, let's give a counter offer. And you go back to the uh, the buyer and says, Listen, uh, I've got some uh, good news and bad news. The good news is the sellers didn't kick me out of their house. The bad news is they rejected your offer. <laughs> what do you want to do now? Right? Okay, gang? I like number three, too. Uh, and by the way, I have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, I got all these from Floyd Whitman. He shared them with us at a training class, and he shares them whenever he's speaking. And, and if you take any of his classes, he'll share these with you. But that's how, this is how Floyd earned his uh, title as the Duke of Dialogue and the Wizard of Words. Uh, he, he just has such a great way of putting things together and making them simple and usable. And, and, uh, and I, I love Floyd for that, and I appreciate that he was put on this earth to share this stuff with us right now because uh, it really makes a big difference. And it's making a difference in a lot of people's lives and careers as well. So number three, John and Mary, if you had a choice, pay me 6% or never sell, what would you do? Be honest. Ooh, think about that. <laughs> you know? Then let me just show you something I think can save you a lot of heartache. You see, I'm on your side. I don't know if you know this, but we have 1,200 hungry agents in our market area. Um, our average marketing time adjusted is 60 days on the market plus 30 days for relist by Cobro. Now, in MLS now, it shows the total amount of days on market, right? Mm -hmm. So you could just show them total days on market. Once we get a buyer, it takes about 45 days for us to get the sellers their money. Sometimes 60 days, right, gang? Right? Mm -hmm. It takes about 135 days on average with 1,200 agents. Now, the reason I show you that is that I want to show you something that will make a difference. Here are 18 houses. And what you do is, what I'm going to recommend you do is use the visual. So what you do is you always have in your listing presentation kit, right, in your book, in your folder, you want to have in the back 12 to 18 listings that are internal listings. They're not comps. And what they're going to do is, that, you know how when you print out a listing, you can see what the fee is on the bottom of the page? 
right? See whether the Cobroke fee is two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Print all those out. Highlight all the fees in yellow, okay? And then put um, uh, one of them in green, that is the highest one, okay? Or uh, you could put it in red, the lowest one. You could do it either way. You could even do both, right? And I'll show you what I mean in a second. But what are we looking for here? Yeah. I'll show you. The best? Oh. Yeah, I'll show you. Okay. You can do either oh, yeah. one. You can do either oh, one. I'll okay. show you. Let's play real estate. Let's pretend that you're one of those hungry agents. And let's pretend that out of these 18 homes, you had to pick one to try and sell. Just one. And now what you do is you put the highest one, John, right? You put that one in green. And you point to the green one. If you had to pick just one, just one to sell, which one would it be? And that one says 3.5% of it, right? And by the way, that's your listing. You're co-broking at 3.5%, right? And um, all the other ones list by your competition, they're all, you'll put them in yellow. They're all 2.5, 2, 2.5, 2, 2.5, 2, 2.5, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. And say, if you were a hungry real estate agent, which one would you work on first? And that would be this one. Now, if you list with me, whose house is that? That's your house, right? <laughs> now let's pretend that 17 of these were on the market at one commission and one was on the market at a lower commission. So what you could do is take one with one that says uh, Cobroke fee one, right? Find one in MLS that says Cobroke fee one and put that one in, in red. Circle it in red, right? Cobroke fee one percent. Yeah. Haven't you seen those? <laughs> yeah, so you find one, print it out, circle it, show the cell. Look, there are agents out there co ranking one percent, right? I thought you had to do two and a half percent in the MLS. That's our company policy, not MLS policy. Yep. You could offer zero if you want, according to MLS. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck with that. Right. If it were up to you and you had to pick just one out of the eighteen houses, which one would you not work on if you were a hungry agent? And by the way, if you list with that company, whose house is that going to be? Yours. <laughs> Any questions? That's we have to be careful, though, because that's against the rule of I did. I know you do. Mm. But the, in other words, you can't, you can't say to a seller, look, we're not going to show your house if you have a lower cobra free. We have to show every and all homes equally and fairly. That's what Martin's getting at. Yeah. So absolutely. And you only show our Carlson. No, you can show any listings with any company. Oh, I thought you said our, our, no, take our listings. Um, no, no I, I meant, if I'm sorry if I did say that, but I, I meant any listings at anywhere in MLS. Yep, anywhere in MLS that shows the, the differences. Find a high one and a low one and a bunch of them in between and say, how do you want to separate yourself? Do you want to separate yourself? Do you want to be the, the, the house that no one really wants to work hard on? Or do you want to be the house that everyone wants to work hard on? And so what you're doing is you're showing them very logically that, you know, let, let's pretend you're an agent. And now they're like, wow, I get it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, another dialogue, it's not in here. Okay. I'm going to give it to you. Is uh, what do you charge for a fee for service? And you say, well, um, you know, we, I, well, I charge, uh, I only charge 4%, but now you have to think about what you want to offer for a co-broke fee. Let me show And then you throw out all your 18 and say, no, so you add four, my four, plus two and a half, that's six and a half. I recommend you go with three, so a total of would be seven. But, you know, I, I only charge four. <laughs> now you have to think about what you're going to offer the Cobroke and show them the same, uh, the same visuals. Okay, again? Um, something's running through my mind. It is human nature. If we, if we as agents go and see a three and a half percent Cobroke, even though we may show all the houses, we're going to make sure we include that one in the mix mm -hmm. for the chance that maybe that one will of course. get picked. Of course. So that's yeah, not, not, that's still being fair. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Yeah, you're going to show the buyers everything and anything that meets their criteria that they want to see. We're not going to base it on. But on we commission. see that our little but light bulb is going to be pretty excited about showing that property, <laughs> don't you think? Oh, don't yeah. you think we're going to encourage the buyer to say, "Hey, listen, why don't I go buy you some lunch, and then we'll come back and look at that one again?" Are you sure you don't want that one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, um, what if you had a um, what if you had a buyer contract? This isn't in here either, but think about this thought. What if you had a buyer contract with the buyer, and the buyer had uh, in their contract had agreed to pay you three percent? Then they got to come up with money. Then they got to come up with the difference, right? Explain that to the seller. If they, if an agent has a three percent contract with a buyer as a buyer's agent, and you're offering two and a half, the other half percent has to come from the buyer. 
if they buy this other property, they get to finance their total brokerage fee for 30 years, <laughs> right? They don't have to come up with any cash out of pocket. So again, how does that affect the co broke fee? How does that affect your saleability? See that game? Yeah. That can make a big difference. So look, I, write, I like what Floyd says too. If it's gonna take me and 1,200 other agents on an average of 135 days to get sellers their cash, how long is it gonna take if I'm the only one that's excited about selling their property, right? <laughs> so what you're doing is you're employing the resources of everyone else out there, not just yourself. And then sometimes they say number four, well, come on, John, it's only 1%. And I say, John and Mary, I want to ask you this, if you knew what I know, you wouldn't even want me to cut my commission. For example, you know what makes, uh, you know what a lot of sellers don't realize? And this is kind of what John, uh, John was referring to earlier. And what you do is you take out seven $1 bills. I just happen to constantly have seven $1 bills in my pocket at all times just for this purpose. <laughs> you are obsessed. <laughs> and so I have my seven $1 bills and I say to the seller, okay, listen, uh, when, we, when I co-broke the property, as you see in, in the MLS, I'm going to co-broke this much. So these three go to the co-broke, all right? That leaves me with this, okay? My broker takes this. That leaves me with this, okay? With this, I have to pay for my overhead. My wardrobe, I like my tie. <laughs> he asked for my car, my own personal marketing and advertising that I do. Okay, taxes. Okay, again, keeping in touch with my sphere of influence and everyone, my all my past clients, so that I can keep a steady flow of buyers coming to your property. Open houses, etc., etc., etc. Okay, and my expenses. That goes with this. And you want me to reduce the fee? How much? One percent? That's this. You want this? This is all I have left, and you want this? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and then you take the bill, and you not. put it in your pocket. <laughs> and that's yours. Okay, gang? So again, it's kind of like showing them in a visual way how, you know, what it is that they're actually doing, you know, with, and what you're actually getting. Now, another way to do it, of course, is you can, you can simply write it on a piece of paper and, and show them the dollar amount and how it all gets broken out and what you're left with. But I like this visual better because you're not getting into actual dollar figures. You're getting into percentages. Right. And, and that, that's really what matters the most. I, I think it's just a more powerful way of, of showing that, uh, how you do that. Okay, again? Um, you know, it, it's funny. You take that $1 bill you have in your hand and you say, listen, this is what I work for. And you want it? I don't think so. <laughs> I have to reduce it. Now, five key points to remember is this. There are not many sellers out there who really want to see an agent give away their profit. Number two, you need a certain amount of money every year in order for you to stay living in this business and does not work and not to live out of balance. You all know what that number is, but you need to make a certain amount of money for you to stay in this business, okay? You are netting what you need to net, so you have money to leave for the grandkids, so you can retire. There's not going to be any Social Security for many of us. And uh, so go out on more appointments. While others cut, you need to protect. Okay, again? The only way to protect is using what? Technique. T technique, right? Mm -hmm. Using technique. I share with you four great dialogues today. If you only used those four and those four alone, um, you would be a pro. Um, so the, th the key thing to do, and if you're watching this DVD, is you're going to practice, drill, and rehearse. Practice, drill, and rehearse. What I would ask you to do is take these dialogues with you, keep them in your car or in the back of your listening presentation book, and you know, study them. Read each one seven times out loud as fast as you can in a mirror, okay? And, and start getting away from looking at them and try to you know, read them you know, uh, without, you're not gonna memorize every exact word, and that's okay. If you do, that's great too. And then before you go into the listing, sit in your car, get there about five minutes early, and read these seven times each before you go into the house, every time you go on a listing appointment. Gang, that's the difference between um, uh, someone who's going to cut and someone who isn't. One of the reasons why people cut their commission, too, is that they don't feel confident that they're delivering the value, so you have to deliver and bring the value. And number two is they don't know what to say 
when someone says, well, you cut your commission, they get nervous, they wiggle, and they do, what do they do? They cut, right? And uh, so hopefully I've given you some good reasons why you don't want to do that today. Um, I think, too, if you don't mind me interjecting, sure. and, I've, and I've done it several times, you tell, you, you have that one objection, because you're not good at the other six, you just do that one that you're good at. Yes. And you, and you give it to them, and you, uh, And you, uh, oh, and you, and you say that that I'm I have to negotiate with these other people. I'm not doing this well for you now because I'm kind of following you from what I'm trying to say. But the uh, you've got another agent that's going to say you know, cut from six down to five, no problem. Do you want that person negotiating for you? I'm getting back on track. Do you want that person negotiating Good. for you, Good or point. the one that's going to give you that you know, little extra? Yeah. Um, I like that's a good one. Yeah, that's yeah, a absolutely. good one. <laughs> what, you're, what I think you're saying is that you don't want a weak negotiator. Yeah, absolutely. If, exactly. if they can't justify their own fee, how well are they going to do it justifying just, your sale price? I probably didn't have because I had the other six in my mind. Absolutely. But, yeah, but, 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 but you just need fine. that one. Yes. And, and explain to them that I'm willing to do this negotiating for you, where someone else may just say, okay, I'll cut it to five. Who do you right. want working for you? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I also wanted to add um, from the other perspective, when we sold my mom and dad's house, before I even was here, um, I had two, a team of realtors, two people, and I loved them. I was so happy to pay them. Yes. They handled so much for us, and I think that if, if you can engender that confidence and, and you can assure them that you will be like that, you will handle everything, and it's right. nothing's going to be a problem. Absolutely. You see, what, what you're getting at here, gang, is that there are two different mindsets. There are two different thoughts that different people have. And they're consumers and they're even real estate agents, you know. There are real estate agents that are walking around, even in your office, yes, in your very own office, <laughs> that have it etched in their brain that there's no way that no one will ever list a house for 7% in a million years that would never happen. And because they don't believe it, it's not true. You see, different people have different belief system, systems, you know? It reminds me of that story of that little girl. She goes to her mom and she says, Mom, how are human beings first created? And she told her the whole story about Adam and Eve and how, you know, God created man and, and so on and so forth. Then she went to her dad and she asked him the same question. And he said, well, you know, uh, when it first started off, there were monkeys and monkeys evolved and they evolved to apes, and apes evolved to humans, and so the girl, very confused, go back, goes back to her mom and says, well, listen, mom, I don't understand. Daddy said we came from monkeys, and you said we came from Adam and Eve, and, and uh, so uh, the wife very quickly turned around to her daughter and said, well, listen, your dad was explaining to you where his side of the family <laughs> came from, okay? <laughs> and I was explaining to you where my side of the family came from. So, you know, there are two different sides, there are two different methods, there are two different belief systems, right, gang, that people have. The only way this is going to be effective and really going to work for you is that you have to get on board. You have to get on board. You have to believe in it first, okay? Uh, sometimes you, you don't believe it, but you do it anyway, and it works, and you're like, wow, that worked, you know? Uh, number four, technique is the right set of words delivered in a professional manner. Number five, you are better off to turn them down rather than let yourself down. Um, I gotta tell you, gang, I live with that, you know, and, and I've been on listing appointments, and these there are people that, uh, very, very rare, but I had met some folks that um, absolutely positively needed to sell their home, and they were not going to list their home for a higher than average fee. I used all the dialogues I possibly could. I had my listing presentation package out all over their table, and they were willing to walk away but so was I. And I walked away, I didn't take the listing, someone else listed it for a lower fee, they listed it and they sold it. And you know what gang? You have to live with that, okay? It's rare, it's extremely rare, but you have to be okay with that because any one listing that I might have lost because of that, I more than made up the difference in charging a higher than average fee. Uh, in one year alone, the difference between the six and the seven percent for me in my pocket was an additional $31,000 in my pocket. So you know what, I know for a fact I didn't lose $31,000 on the listings that I walked away from. By the way, the average sale price was $120,000. Well, 
a lot lower than it was. Ruben and Ruben. Okay, gang. So <laughs> now on the next page, I just I I uh, printed this out. This came out via email, and I wrote at the top another example of how higher fees are making a comeback. And uh, four percent Cobra fee on um, on some condos out in Boston. You know, so they're out there. Uh, the next uh, set of handouts that I have, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through these quickly. We're not going to actually role play them with them, but I'm going to give you the, the, the fill-ins for the blanks real quick, okay? And um, so this, this is the, uh, the seminar that I put together years ago when I was explaining to agents. These are the dialogues that I was using uh, when I was an agent. Um, and so uh, I didn't have the benefit of having the dialogues I just shared with you when I was an agent. If I did, I'd have used those. They're much better, than, in my opinion, than these. But these work really good, too, because this is what I had to work with, and it worked, OK? Now, uh, words. When talking to the seller, use the term fee for service instead of the word commission. It's the other term. Just use that one. So it's not fee for or, service. it's fee for. Yeah, use the term fee or fee for service. Yeah, cross out the word or and just we'll put an effort from it. Yeah. There you go. That's creative. You want to write Fee for answer? service. I like that. Maybe that's what I should have done, right? Um, a technique that I would use, blank your fee for service into the exclusive right to sell agreement, or what we call our marketing agreement, right? And what should you do? Type it. Well, we did that better than better than that for you. We actually pre-printed them for you at at, at Carlson GMAC at our company. We have them pre-printed uh, in the forms themselves. That's even better than typing them into your fee for service. You know, dude, is that that fact? Because I I hate to say this, but yeah, you know, three of my three of my associates here, but sure. uh, have those been distributed and everything? Yeah, those that are typed? Yeah. Because I'm using one now. You have some that are blank? No. no. You have to no. write them in? Yeah. Okay. yeah. But the one that I like, and I've used four consecutive times and it's worked, yes. well, it's, it has the fee typed at 7%. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there's a blank mm -hmm. there. And okay. I just cross the 7 out and I say, I'm, we're going to do it for 6. Okay. Well, let me. Uh, did you hear what he said, Mark? Uh, yeah. We talked yeah. about this yesterday. Um, I don't. I have to see that form to know what it looks like. But right now, when, uh, what we have is, we also have seven percent form. So what we started doing just yesterday in our listing kits is, when an agent comes out of this office with a listing kit, it's pre-printed in there at seven, but there's no blank next to it. So um, what people were doing is they were crossing out the six and putting in a five. And first. First point I wanted to bring up to everyone is that there are a lot of numbers between five and six. Right. There's five and seven eighths, like Ken negotiated one time and he negotiated 5.75, was it? Like yeah, something was like, it wasn't, he didn't go to right to five, you know, it went from 5.75, didn't have to go all the way down there. But uh, these say seven, so I thought, you know, hey, if you're going to get credit for doing something, cross out the seven and, and put a six in there, right? Like, uh, like what you're doing, John. And uh, you might as well get credit for them and, and, and have them see it rather than have just a blank and then you write it in there. Okay, gang? So that, that's great. What you're using, I think, is a great idea. Do they have to initial that? Yes, they do. And you do too, the sellers do. Okay, so you're changing you can, the contract. Or you can take that 7% and say, you know, it, uh, I, I, I can cut, but what I'll have to do is take out the home warranty that I was going to, going to include. Yeah, you'll have to pay the home warranty. And you'll have to pay the home warranty if that's something that you want. They're going to say, no, I don't want the home warranty. Well, they explain that, too. But then, yeah. but $500 is, is a lot less than that 6%, that 1% that you would have got of if course. you talked them into it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't do all this stuff and reduce my fee. It was kind of, I like what that other does. It's kind of like I lied to you a minute ago when I said I would do it for less. You know, um, I, I, I'll be honest with you, gang. Um, not a big fan of uh, cutting the fee you know, and putting that on there, what I just mentioned. And I'll tell you why, because it does, it is kind of like you lied a minute ago. In other words, if you didn't say anything, like if John goes in and he, he does it the way he does it, and he, the way he presents it, I like it. Because what he'll do is he'll say, it says seven, but we're going to do it for six. This, this is what I do for my clients, right? That's fine. But if you wait for somebody to say, hey, why does it say seven? Can you reduce your fee? And then you say yes. It's kind of like you lied a minute ago when you said you were going to do it for seven. Okay, so don't get caught up in that trap, you know, because um, uh, it just, it doesn't feel right to the consumer. 
And uh, I'll tell you, I had a gym membership recently, and I kept saying no, 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 like three times. And they wanted uh, a membership fee of $100, and I said no. And then they said, okay, we'll make it $49, and I said no. Then they had the manager come over, literally came over, and he sat down, and he crossed out the 49 and put a big zero on the page. He says, here, how about that? And I said, wow, okay. So I signed up for the membership, right? It's a monthly membership, pretty inexpensive. And um, I'm driving away and I'm thinking, and I, I was, and I called one of my friends on the phone. I said, yeah, I just signed up for a gym membership. You know, those people were gonna let me pay that $100 if I didn't say no. So everyone who is paying the $100 is getting screwed. <laughs> you know, they don't know. So I said, hey, if you're gonna go to that gym, tell them you don't wanna pay the fee, you won't have to. And it just made me feel yucky. You know, it didn't make me feel good about that company. So beware of that. Bare minimum. Well, I still don't like then that you print, the, that it is printed in there, the seven, because that's our contract. And then yes. right away, if, uh, as John says, that you say, well, you know, this is what I do, but I'll do this for you. I mean, yeah. why you could we, say, you, you know? Well, you, here's what you have to do, Mark. You as an independent contractor, real estate agent, you have the freedom and flexibility of a certain range to work with. If you want to take a seven percent form with you, a six percent form with you, and just leave it at that and not cross anything out, we'll give you the six percent form. That's not a problem. Okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? Okay. Um, so what you do is set your own precedent, set your own policy, um, set your own value, and what you're going to provide and what you're going to charge, and then just go out and do it and be consistent with it. Now, if you're going to increase your fee, okay, gang, if you're going to increase your fee to seven. Well, I would recommend that in order for you to justify that, you do more. Maybe get brochure boxes on all your signs. Maybe buy, invest in something like a 1-800 number that you can advertise that people call the 1-800 number and they can get a, a message about the, a detailed messaging about the property and a fax information sheet about the property, um, things like that. Do a little extra marketing if you're gonna charge a little more money, okay, to justify that. Now, acknowledge that fees are negotiable. Then point out that you charge blank percent as a bare minimum because of the quality of service you provide and the results that you get. So sometimes people just say to you, Louise, are, are real estate fees negotiable? They're testing you. They know the answer to that because they, they read it. You know, they sure the, are. No, yeah, absolutely my, they uh, are. I charge 7% um, as a bare minimum though. Yeah. Why? Because of the value that I'm going to give you. Yeah, in uh, selling your house. The ser which is the services that I provide the and the results that, that I'm going to get for you. Absolutely. The results yeah. I'm going to get for you. Very powerful. Yeah. Uh, I, so these, these, are, these are the things that I used to say when I was an agent to get the 7%. Point out that, uh, that the seller is talking about their paycheck. Your, and the fill in the blank in the word paycheck, your paycheck is like theirs. You count it like they do. So what you can do is you can say to the seller, let's imagine that when you go to work tomorrow, your boss asks you to take a cut and pay, but still work as hard as you're working now. How would you feel? Right? <laughs> Mr. or Mrs. Seller, that's exactly what you're asking me to do. Take a cut and pay and go to work flat out for you to get your household. And I just look at them and say, I, I wouldn't say that, I just look at them and go, with a friendly smile. No with a friendly <laughs> smile. <laughs> And then, and then you could turn and say, any questions? Any other questions? And they'd say, no. I hand him the pen, right? Say, all you have to do now is approve this form. I'll get the sign of the yard in a few days. And then start packing up. Pack up your stuff. I used that on, 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 a, on, a, on my last, on the last deals that they uh, were teachers. I said, do you have a teacher's union that you work with? And they said, yes. I said, a pretty good union to work with. She said, yeah, they're pretty strong. I said, I don't have a union. <laughs> I don't have a union. But they fight for you and get you the raises every year. I have nobody that does that for me. I have to do this and I have to negotiate for you. Right. And you get on that oh. and it works. I love that. That's a good one. Good. We have to add that to the list. That was right off the cuff. Yeah. If you're hearing this on DVD, you want to rewind that and write that one down. That's a good one. Thank you. <clears throat> I love it. That's great. Who uh, else has unions? Everybody, like firemen oh, and policemen and all that. Carpenters, electricians, painters. Oh, God, I hope yeah. we yeah. fall into some yeah. of them. So, <laughs> that's a good one. That they don't say, oh, I work for myself, just like you. <laughs> yeah. And would they cut their... Huh? They wouldn't cut their price yeah. and their fee. In fact, well, the, they're the raising are, them now. Actors are going on strike. I heard, I saw mm -hmm. on the news, you know. 
the writers went on strike one last year, and yeah. now the actors are threatening to go on strike now as well. Benefits of a higher fee. Never has a property sold higher because it was listed for a lower fee. Think about that, gang. A listing is never sold for more money because it had a lower fee attached to it, right? <laughs> However, we as agents can tell story after story about properties that sold quicker because they had a higher than average sale price. I'm mean, sorry. <laughs> a higher than average fee for service, not sale price. Scratch that. Now, let's pretend that when you arrive at work tomorrow, your boss offers you a 15% bonus if you work harder for the rest of the week. Would you get more excited and take her up on her offer? Yeah, of course you would. What? Okay, you're then not why work, not you're get... not working hard already? <laughs> How can you work hard? Well, uh, we're putting this out there as a co right? Okay. okay. So the second part of this, okay then, why not give me some ammunition, <coughs> ammunition, mm -hmm. to get out and get all the agents excited mm -hmm. so they'll work harder at selling your home. Why don't we list it at 1% higher than my bare minimum of 7% and list it for 8% and we'll co-broke a uh, 4% co-broke fee and 4% for me. That way, it'll give me the ammunition I need to get everyone really excited about getting the property sold. How does that sound? Sounds great. And then they might laugh and smile with a friendly no and go, no. <laughs> and then they'll look at you and they'll say, the 7% is fine, John. Don't, don't get carried away. And, they, and I've literally done that with people. You know, they started to go down, I went up. <laughs> You're going to go down 2% on me? I'm going to go up 2%. Where are we going to meet? Right at my bare minimum, which is my set, right? All you need to do now is simply approve this form, and I'll get you want in the time you, get you what you want in the time you want. Wouldn't that be great? I like the word ammunition. It's a guy thing. It's a very military thing. Well, uh, different people have different perceptions or different words. Word. You could do, use whatever you want, Louise. You okay. can cross that word out and put anything you want that you're gonna, it's going to be comfortable for you to use it, right? I, gave some, I asked somebody for a mission in the sense that, no. and I told you about it, that there are these 10 condos in the same area for sale, and no, people are not even looking at them right now, let alone price prices. You know? So uh, they really have to sell. So I said, okay, I'm going to give you some ammunition, a proposition, that what about give an incentive to the lister who's going to bring a buyer that you would give them a thousand dollars that's wow that's a good marketing thing said, all right let me think about that so they've gone away on vacation now so i hope that that we could do that i would offer to you who brings the buyer to buy it you would so that it would be an incentive instead of being six seven eight percent you're getting that and we're allowed to do that absolutely that's a good question, and I think I've asked it before, but I'm, as I get older, I'm forgetting what I was told <laughs> yesterday. On that $1,000, does that go to John Nishan or does it go to Carlson? It's going to go to Carlson, but you mean you're going to get a price? I, thought, I mean, yeah. I assume that was the case. But it, ha it has to go to the company yeah. just because brokers are the only one that can actually receive compensation. Yeah. And then depending on each individual office or company will depend on whether that amount gets split 50-50. Some companies do that. Some companies and offices in our, in our company will give you the whole thing. And some will pay you on your split, whatever your split is. If your split is at 60%, they give you 60% of it, and so on and so forth. So different offices have different policies on it. Or if you want to use some of John's stuff against him, you can negotiate directly with him for 100% of that $1,000. That sounds like there a you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, the next one is the MLS printout. And this is just um, a weaker version of what I shared with you earlier, in my opinion, but it's still a good version. Uh, all things being equal, which property would you be more inclined to sell? That's the question you ask when you lay out all the MLS printouts there, you show them, you know, one is offered at three, there are three or four offered at two, two and a half. You know, all things being equal, which one would you be more inclined to sell if you were a hungry agent? And I like this. This one I came up with on my own, okay? And uh, you see, real estate agents are real people. That's where they get the word real estate, because they're real people, right? Uh, they have families to provide for, mortgages to pay. They have all the same types of bills and responsibilities that everyone else does. So doesn't it make sense that the agents will work harder for you if you give them a reason to do so? And you know what, gang? It just made sense to me. It just came out of my mouth one day, and I decided to write it down. <coughs> and I was using that quite often. Um, 
Real estate agents are real people, just like you, and just like everyone else. They have mortgages to pay for, bills to pay. Aren't they going to work harder if they have that incentive in front of them? Absolutely. This one here, the next one, is called Business Card Poker. And this one, uh, my brother uh, Jeffrey came up with this. He was in real estate for all of about two weeks. Uh, he got his license, came into real estate. Uh, really sharp guy. He's actually on his way to becoming an attorney. He's about three quarters of the way through law school right now. And, um, and this was really exciting when he came up with this. Uh, he actually came and he worked with me and, and uh, you know, uh, I, I probably quit because I put him on prospecting right away. I had him calling for sale by owners right away. That's probably why he quit. And probably why anybody would quit if they started prospecting for sale by owners right away. Uh, but anyway, business card poker, right? And so he went out on a listing presentation, and he, they asked him, you know, to cut the commission, and he came up with this, uh, kind of a variation of some of the things that I was sharing with him about not cutting the fee. So he said, he took, I said, I took three business cards out on the table, and I wrote 3% and then I wrote less than half underneath it, just like you did here in the example. Mm -hmm. Then I wrote 7% on another one, a bare minimum. Then I wrote 8% plus a $1,000 bonus on another one. And, I, and then I, I, he said, I, I laid them out on the table and I said to the seller, look, pretend these are three houses. Now look at these three houses. What's the same about them? They're all the color white, right? Because the cars were all white on the back. Because <laughs> he said, they, they're all the same square footage, aren't they? They're all the same size, right? So the all homes, they pretty much look the same, don't they? Right? And by the way, they're all in the same neighborhood. Which one of these would you be more inclined to sell if you were a real estate agent? <laughs> and by the way, there are 1,200 hungry agents out there right now. Which one would they be more inclined to sell? And so what it did is it was another great visual, you know, because I, I always used to tell my brother, too, don't ever tell anybody anything. You always want to show them. Don't ever use words. Use words in a visual, okay, if you're going to say something. So this is what he came up with on his own. I was really proud of him. I think that's outstanding. And we just call it business card poker. So uh, so I give, I give my brother Jeff credit for that one. That's a good one. You guys like that one? It's kind of neat, huh? <laughs> Professional negotiator. This is going back to what, uh, what we said earlier, uh, what, what Ken was alluding to, actually. Uh, you see, you're hiring me to do more than just find a buyer for your home. You're hiring me to get you the highest price possible. Isn't that right? And you wait for the yes response. Now, how many, um, who's been in business here the least amount of time? Probably you, Louise, I would say, right? Uh, how long have you been in business? Since May 1st. So how many, help me out, do the like math. Six, like say eight weeks, nine weeks. Eight weeks, anyone in the business, been in the business less than that, right? No? Um, so eight weeks, uh, let's see, so it's, all right, so let's use this in the dialogue. You ready? If you did the same thing every day for eight weeks, you'd get pretty good at it, wouldn't you? I mean, if, if you had no experience playing the piano, but you practiced 20 minutes a day every day for eight weeks, you'd get pretty good at it. You might not be a li you know, Liberace, but you know, you could, you could play a song, right? right. Absolutely, you'd get pretty good at it. So, how many of you have been, now what did you do prior to getting into real estate? I was a real estate paralegal. Did you deal with negotiating? Uh, or were you around, were you I've surrounded with people who were I've negotiating? And I've been a consumer all my life, so I mean, <laughs> and I'm a good shopper. <laughs> so that's, how, long, how many years have you been a consumer? Ever since I was five. <laughs> all right. And my mom took me to Jordan Marsh. <laughs> okay, so. so you tell them, say, look, I've been a consumer for... <laughs> What, yeah. However, how many years? You know, you're very yeah. careful. I bought my own yeah. car. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? I've, I've been a consumer I bought, I for... Bought my own ho I bought right. a house with my husband. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So you would say, that, okay, I've been a consumer for 10 years, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that would make you 15 at this point, right? That's okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I've been a consumer many for so many... If you did the same thing every day for so many years, you'd be pretty good at it now, by now, wouldn't you? Right? Um, so you see, they're, they're, they're hiring a professional negotiator gang, not just somebody who is um, but the you know, thing marketing is, their property. Negotiating skills transfer not from any, any area to real estate, and I believe that negotiating is something that I can do well because I deal well with people. Yes. Yep. Very good. With people. So. 
The next one is on their behalf. If I negotiate my own, this is what I meant. This, I thought it was this one I was talking about earlier when I said this is the one that Ken alluded to. I was wrong about the previous one, but I, I can say it about this one. This is what Ken alluded to. If I negotiate my own money that way, what do you think I'm apt to do with yours? Let me ask you this. Would you prefer to hire an agent who's going to negotiate your price down when an offer comes in? Or is going to negotiate the buyer's price up when an offer comes in? And, and I used to explain to sellers, and this isn't in your notes if you want to make a quick note about this one too, is uh, I used to explain to sellers that um, you know there are three different types of agents in the business. If I asked a group of agents there are three different types of agents, they would say a buyer's agent, a seller's agent, and uh, a dual agent, right? And I, say, and I would say to the seller uh, something different. I'd say there are three different types of agents. There are agents who work for the seller, there are agents who work for the buyer, and then there are agents who work for the deal. You've got the deal. They work for themselves. I work for the seller. I'm one of the I'm one of the agents that work for the seller. Because I know that if I work for you and my business is completely and totally dependent on referrals, that if I just work for the deal or work for myself, you're gonna know that. And you're not gonna send me referrals. You're not gonna send your friends and family to me. And I dependent upon you sending me referrals to people. My my it's the lifeblood of my business is getting referrals. So um, I'm gonna go to work straight out for you to get you the most amount of money for this property because I need your future business. And they just, they kind of, you know what, these things just make sense. They kind of look and say, wow, okay. More importantly, they look, they look at you as a realtor and they say, wow, <coughs> this lady gets it. This guy gets it, you know? They, they really are a business person, not just uh, someone trying to make a deal, or put a deal together. I like this one too, who really pays? When you get an offer on your property, I'm confident that with my skills, my skills, I could get you more money. As a matter of fact, if I can get you just $2,500 more for your house than another agent, it would more than make up the difference between my fee and theirs, wouldn't it? Now that $2,500, you'd have to adjust that, you know, is it going to be, uh, 1500 for you? Is it going to be 3500 Is it 4500 Is it $10,000 difference depending on the price of the property? I happen to specialize in getting my sellers the highest price possible and getting them moved fast. Very difficult in this market. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Well, it's, it's all relative. But yes. now, Mark brings up a point. What if you take the statistics in the multiple listing service and your average days on market, John, are only 64 days on market, and then you take the average MLS and it's 120, and you say, look, here are some MLS statistics to prove it. Now, the reason why John's days on market are shorter than everyone else is that he doesn't take overpriced listings. And, he, and because they're priced right, and because they have a high enough fee for service tagged onto it as a co-broke fee, they're selling. Or he doesn't take the listing. So if you want to have, you want to be able to say that you specialize in selling your homes fast and for the most amount of money, don't take overpriced listings. <laughs> Remember, it's the second mouse that gets the cheese, right? So maybe it's good to be the second agent in to get the listing, not the first agent. Uh, it's okay to, to turn them down now rather than let them down later. I like this one. You're on an expired appointment and the seller says, well, look, the last agent only charged me 6%. Why are you charging me 7 And I say, no, she didn't. She charged you 0% because she didn't get the home sold. Woo! Right? <laughs> exactly. And again, I have to specialize in getting my sellers the highest price possible and getting them moved out. Fast. Fast. You got it. Again, they say, the last agent only charged me... 4%, John, why are you charging 7 Well, actually, I really should be charging you a 10% fee for service. You'll be receiving greater results when I get to work tonight on marketing your home. Can you see how your home will sell faster and for more money when I list your property and I point and I share all, and I point to all the stuff on their table that I shared with them about mark what I'm going to do to market their home because I put a visual to every single item that I was going to do to market their home. So I put them all that stuff out on the table. I said, can you see how I'm going to get your home sold faster and for more money than my competition? Um, and here's how I came up with that for you. Ready for this, gang? Some of these came up by accident. I was literally on a listing appointment, and it only happened to me one time, and I wish it happened to me more. <coughs> but I was on a listing appointment. I had all my stuff spread out all over the table. 
the, the lady of the house stands up, slams her hands on the table about when I'm about three quarters of the way through the presentation. And she stands up and she looks at me and she says, John, I said, yes. I'm scared now. I'm like, what is she going to do? <laughs> she says, how much are you going to charge me for all this stuff? I want to know. And I said, uh, only 7%. And she said, oh, thank God. I thought you were going to say 10 or something. Now, all right, keep going, keep going. And she sat down, she calmed down. And I just stood there. I was still in shock. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that was good, you know. I didn't know what she was going to say. Uh, she must have been living in the woods that she didn't know. <laughs> Come on. Listen, I, I, here's I like, what she was doing. She was literally, honest to God, she didn't live in the woods. She was a pretty sharp lady. But here's what she was doing and why she said what she said. I was the third agent in. She'd already interviewed two people. You know what they showed up with? A clipboard. And, and they didn't, they, here's their marketing plan. It was verbal, not in writing. Their marketing plan was the, the four P's of marketing, put a sign in the yard, put an ad in the paper, put an MLS, and pray that it sells. <laughs> that was their marketing plan. Mine was all over the tables. Wow, it just blew them away. Because those agents were charging 6%. And so she was saying, okay, if they're charging 6% and they're doing nothing, what is this guy gonna charge who's doing everything in the world? And she started tallying up the numbers and started thinking, you know, that she started making a comparison in her mind between what I was doing and what other agents were doing. You see, gang, it's all about delivering the value. Now, um, here's the bottom line. People aren't going to pay you seven unless you're delivering that much or more in their mind. You follow me? So all you have to do is be better than your competitors to go in there on the appointment. It's a slam dunk. You see, very rarely did I have to negotiate. The negotiation for my 7% wasn't done in what words to say when and if they objected. It was done by giving a phenomenal listing presentation and showing them all the things that I was going to do for them to get their property sold in a tough market as tough as it is right now. Can you go in with all that stuff and tell them this thing, all the things that I'm going to do for you, all the things that I paid for to, yes. do, to do for you? Absolutely. I, and think, I, I think that would be more powerful. I even used that as a dialogue. Can you remind me of that too? And again, this isn't here. This is a little bonus one. Is I used to say to them, listen, I'm not netting more money in my pocket than the other agents are. I'm netting about the same, but I'm getting your home sold faster for more money because I'm taking that additional 1 or 2% you're paying me. I'm reinvesting it in the marketing of your home to get your home sold faster for more money. And they would, they would look at my stuff. They said, yeah, I can see that. It's, it's, you, can't, you can't argue that. And listen, I know what my competitors are doing. I know what they're doing to market their properties. All I have to do is drive by the listing. All I have to do is show one of their listings. Walk into the property and see how those properties are being marketed. Okay, gang? Uh, the next one, the last agent only charged me blank percent. Isn't it true that better doctors, attorneys, and accountants charge higher fees because of the level of service that they deliver? I mean, if you needed an operation on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on your knee, would you hire the, 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 the surgeon that charged the least amount of money or the one who got you the best results who charged a little more? I mean, go for the best. So absolutely, right. Mr. and Mrs. Sell, I want to mm -hmm. remind you that a home, I don't know if this is true for you folks, tell me if it is or it isn't, but a home for most people is the largest investment of their life. Why would you put your largest investment in your life in the hands of someone who isn't good at what they're doing? And a good telltale sign of whether they're good or not at what they're doing is how much they charge. Isn't that true about attorneys, doctors, and accountants? The ones that charge more money will typically do a better job, right? So do realtors. You see, realtors know what they're worth. <laughs> right? Yep. Pretty compelling. Next page is just some highlights, some things that I wanted to mention, which was when a seller asks, is your fee negotiable, I want you to seize that golden opportunity you've been given to negotiate a higher commission or a bonus for selling the agent or both. Uh, for the selling agent, not selling the agent. For a selling agent or both. So when they try to hit you low, you hit them high. Okay, gang? <laughs> they try to get both. And... Um, I, loved, I, I got this out of a book I read years ago, and I, I love the quote. It was so valuable to me, and I'm, I'm going to share with you now. And I put a couple of blanks in there for you, some things to write in. When negotiating what we charge for our services, we often forget that a lower fee on its own is seldom synonymous with greater value. One of the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes we make 
is that quite often it's the only item we sell. Um, what is the only item we sell? Um, value. And that's what we're selling. Oh, selling value. Okay. We yeah. sell value. That's right. Hey, gang, you've heard me say this before in other classes. Real estate agents don't sell houses. Houses sell houses. So what are you left to sell? Value. Value. Okay? In fact, the only time you're really a salesperson, truly, is when you're on a listing appointment, competing for a listing. Okay, gang? Now, um, the, the rest of this packet is peppered with more stuff, beautiful stuff, uh, that you can read at your leisure. Uh, your fee for professional service, believe in your value uh, and defend it. And it talks about um, some other great dialogues that I love here uh, that are really good. So, um, you know, feel free to go through these as well. I mean, again, the more dialogues that you put into your brain, the more you're going to end up with um, uh, re retaining some of it. And then um, about halfway through that last part, there's an article here that I emailed to everyone actually recently, and I copied it and put it in this handout. It's Will you reduce your commission? And this is uh, by Walter Sanford, who's a real estate agent and a, uh, a sales trainer as well. And he got an email from somebody that said, you know, if you want me to lower your price, you're going to lower your fee. And this is how he responded to the email and, uh, and what he said in return. And then he went through and he provided you with this very powerful tool. And I love this. And this is a great visual. And he listed all the things that could go wrong with your closing that I have to work for. And what it does is it adds value to what it is that you're actually doing. You see, my job is not to just find the buyer. So he has one, two, three, four, <laughs> five. Oh my gosh. That's how this video project is six, seven <laughs> seven pages of things that he's going to have to work on to keep the deal together after the after it goes under agreement and this these this is all his responsibility so you're not just paying me to find the buyer for the property you're paying me to keep the deal together as well in fact that's really when i go to work okay gang so um anyways thank you all for your time and attention today did you get some good and valuable information today that will help you make more money as always as always okay great that was my goal so enjoy the the weekend gang and uh, again uh, those of you watching the DVD and those of you here in class practice drill and rehearse these dialogues as often as you can as many times as you can in order for them to sink into your subconscious mind so that when you're out on that listing appointment and someone says Will you cut your commission? You will say, no. no. <laughs> With a friendly smile. OK, thank you all. Have a great weekend. Thanks, John. Thank, thank you. you. We didn't get on any of the